Hey, what is going on with y'all, man? It is Black Balloon, and I'm coming back with another video. So y'all already know what's going on. No, I did not tell my cat to get right here. He just volunteered himself. But with that being said, y'all, um, today we are here to talk about Terrence Howard. Now, a couple of y'all are already aware of the clip that we're going to react to and talk about because y'all asked me to do this video. Now, I didn't even see the clip before a couple of y'all asked, but I wasn't surprised with what he said. You know, Terrence Howard, I think he was just recently on Joe Rogan, and obviously Joe Rogan invited him to the podcast because, you know, he has this whole, I don't even know what you want to call it. Like, I think it's called Terryology or something like that. When I heard it, I was just like, oh my God, I'm... I wasn't even about to read in it. Of course, we've heard him talk about mathematics, propulsion, all kind of stuff and theories that, you know, kind of makes him seem like he's very smart or, you know, at least he's one of those guys that just tries to make himself seem smarter than what he really is and has a lot of people, I would say, like blindly just listening to him for nothing. The clip that we're gonna talk about is something that once you see it, I don't think you would ever pay Terrence Howard any attention ever again, which we already know, you know, he's no different than anybody else who's talked about this. I think the most recent video we did was Taraji P. Henson. And because we, we've covered this topic a couple of times, but you know, when different actors come out and speak on the method acting and basically their bodies being hosted by spirits in order for them to play their roles, we have to talk about it. So I think the most recent was Taraji P. Henson. Before that, it was the guy that starred in Snowfall. And um, I can't remember the one before that, but I think we went in detail with it with Denzel Washington, Oprah. So, you know, a bunch of your favorite actors and actresses have already admitted this, but I think the way Terrence Howard, you know, the way he worded it, he made it very like obvious what is going on. And I thought it was very interesting. So we definitely got to react to this when y'all want to get y'all a pen at the end of this video. So without me talking too much and my cat being in the screen, with that being said, y'all, check this out. Oh, no, check this out. I made $12,000 for doing Hustle and Flow. And then on top of it, <laughs> what Paramount did, instead of putting my name as Terrence Howard performing the, the songs, right. they put performed by DJ. Well, they own DJ. So guess what? The performance royalties went to Paramount. They went, Wait a so minute. They didn't go to Terrence, Terrence Howard. Howard. They went $12, to... $12,000. All, that's all I ever made from Hustle and Flow. Everything else went right back into Paramount. So now I got to sue Paramount or send them a letter. Are you serious? I got to send them a letter to say, hey, you guys owe me about 20 years worth of residuals and, and performance royalties. But I didn't know, I was just, right, trying, right, I was just right. trying to pay my rent then. I made $6,000 doing, doing Crash. Crash didn't... I remember the movie Crash, dollars. yes, that's right, that's right. The business don't pay actors anything. That's why we're, that's why the strike is going on. Actors are struggling. As you and I were kind of joking earlier, it's hard out here for a pimp. Yeah, it is hard, unless you do it right. Unless you do and it I right. And I was, I'm, I've never been good at being a pimp. You know, the pimp has to have a heart, a heartless, a heart of stone. Now, I thought it would be interesting to show that clip just because it gives a little bit of insight to why the recent strike happened in Hollywood where a bunch of your shows were delayed, a lot of stuff wasn't filmed, and you know shows that you might be interested in haven't come out yet or they will be coming out in the next year or two, right? So he gave a little bit of insight about something that happened to him a long time ago, the movie that he won his first Oscar from, which was Hustle and Flow. You know, the movie that I guess you would say took his career to another level. Um, he said he only earned twelve thousand dollars 
from that movie and he was basically playing a pimp and he also got pimped by paramount so it's pretty ironic but we all know that's something that's been going on from the music industry to the film industry you know they basically set him up to where they didn't have to pay him because they own the rights to dj dj being the character that he played even though that character was terrence howard but you're acting in a movie it's not real so you know they set it up to where they wouldn't have to pay him residuals and it's, it's like wow you know the fact that they could even do that is almost i don't even know what you want to call that because to put it in simple terms it's terrence howard being terrence howard but in the movie he's dj so in fact they actually own it because it's not really terrence howard it's <laughs> it's crazy it's it's absolutely crazy it almost reminds you of like 360 deals um and in the you know music industry them actually owning the rights to your music you know um and you really get nothing from it it's crazy but i thought just putting that in there to kind of give a history of terrence howard because y'all remember terrence howard has been around for a very long time um he played in sunset park i think that was back in 96. now obviously he wasn't like the biggest name in that movie back then but it just goes to show how long he's really been in hollywood i'm sure he has seen it all and the way he spoke so confident in this next clip it it kind of wowed me for a second when I was actually listening to it. Remember, he also played um, in Living Single as well. So he's been there. He's seen it. Um, for those who haven't seen this clip that I'm about to show y'all, you know, like I said, just to hear him actually say it the way that he does, to accept it the way that he does is, is kind of crazy to me because I don't know if people realize you know how dangerous the spirit world can be to someone and you would think with how smart he makes himself seem that he wouldn't just play with it so freely but with that being said y'all check this out and you said something i've never really heard a lot of actors say about the process of acting and you said that sometimes when you walk off they walk off with your clothes yeah. Can you explain that? Well, as an actor, as um, you're, you're more like a medium. Mm -hmm. You know, when you really get there, you you know, you go into this zone and you really divorce yourself of who you are, mm -hmm. and you just become a garment that something else puts on. Now, right. a lot of people sit up there and do impersonations of other folks, mm -hmm. you know, instead of allowing that spirit, you know, but I sit up and I'll pray for a little bit and go in a dark place, um, mm -hmm. go in a bathroom, turn off the lights, look in the mirror. Um, we'll have the light on at first and then after one minute, turn the light off and, you know, and search until you find, see your own glow, your own aura and then you watch it change. Wow. And it's a scary thing yeah. because you'll feel like some hands are on you wow. and you lose a little bit of control of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you stay with it, you know, you'll you'll be inhabited by mm -hmm. something and then you'll walk out and the character wow. with you and you got to know how to, to say goodbye to it. Right. If you really want to yeah. get there. Right. Right? Now, yeah. A lot of people are afraid, mm -hmm. you know, to, to empty themselves and be filled up with something else mm -hmm. but you know as an actor you're an emotional prostitute wow you know you put on whatever you need for the john mm -hmm. put on you're turning a trick you're turning an emotional trick wow and it's no nothing yeah. more glorious yeah. than that okay now first off the wig is wild just looking at this picture it looked like this dude finna tell you some bullshit or try to sell you some bullshit but what he goes into is not something we haven't heard before. Now, the way that he explains it is very clear cut. He said you become a medium, a garment for something else to wear. Speaking as in a spirit. Now, what he goes on to say next is crazy. He said a lot of people don't want to allow that spirit to take over. He said a lot of people would rather 
impersonate, you know, the character that they're trying to play. He said, if you really want to get there, you have to allow the spirit to enter your body. He said he will go in the bathroom with the light on for one minute. He said he will start to pray and go into a dark place. Then he will cut the light off and sit there and search for his aura to glow and start to change. Like, that's some shit where we, you may have to rewind this and really listen to what he's telling you. He said he will pray and go in a dark place. So he's not praying to God. You don't go in a dark place when you pray to God. You don't have to do all that. That that That's a place of, you know, truth, happiness. You're praying to God. We don't go in dark places to pray to God. So let's get that out of there. That's out of the equation. Then he says he keeps the light on for one minute. So he's not telling you that he's actually praying, you know, to Satan. He's he's probably, you know, has a setup. You know, um, he's, he's doing a ritual, basically, because that's why he said he keeps the light on for one minute. You know, I guess you can you want to call it mirror gazing, whatever you want to call it. He then cuts that light off. And searches for his aura to glow and then change and feel something take a hold of you. He said, if you stay with it, you're going to feel some hands feel like they're touching you and you're going to lose control of yourself. He is fully explaining a ritual in order to allow this demonic spirit to inhabit your vessel and take over for you for whoever you are trying to portray. Denzel Washington did the same thing, I think, with the Malcolm X role. A bunch of them, Oprah, a bunch of them have done it. They fully embody. Remember, Taraji P. Henson was talking about it. We could pull this back up since they have history together. We could pull her clip right back up just for some context. This blows my mind. It said if you stick with it, you know, you will be inhabited by something. Just look at his face right here. You'll be inhabited by something. By whatever demonic spirit, you know, wants to take a hold of your body and help you with this process. Don't be scared of it, though. Then he goes on to say, if you really want to get there once again. So obviously this is something that's for people or you know, celebrities, A-list celebs, actors that really take this serious are really in the occult. That if you are really willing to empty yourself and allow something else to fill you up, pause, you know, no ditty, but seriously, goes on to say that you are an emotional prostitute as an actor. You know, meaning you have to be willing to pretty much allow anything or take in anything, any kind of spirit, treatment, emotions. You have to be able to embody it in a sense that this is what it takes if you really want to, you know, make your audience feel what they are actually watching. And it's crazy, you know, to hear someone actually talk about this because it, it goes deeper than just having talent, you know, being a talented actor. It goes much deeper. And I don't think they volunteer, you know, to do this kind of stuff. I believe once you reach a certain level, a certain amount of money, you have to, you know, you have to join that occult. You know, this is what we do when you get to this kind of level. We seek help from the spirit world. We seek help from demonic spirits in order for us to, you know, cast spells on the listener, on the people that are watching. Because you have to think about it. It's deeper than just them allowing themselves to be, as he said, filled up with spirits. <laughs> it's deeper than that. Because then you have to think about what you're actually watching 
You're no longer watching Terrence Howard. He has a different face now. He just told you. When he comes out of that bathroom, he has no control anymore. He's not himself. We wouldn't, we can't imagine what that feels like. The man said he searches for its aura and he watches it glow and then he watches it change. He prayed in order to go into a dark place. So they know who they are praying to. They do it over and over and over and they get the same results because they're praying to the demonic realm. Just look at him with his wig on. What else do you expect from someone like this? And that's why I said it's much bigger than them, than just them doing that and being a part of this, like, you know, occultic type of stuff. You have to think about you're watching this stuff. Now, obviously, he didn't do this to play hustle and flow. He didn't go into the spirit world and be possessed by a demon in order to be a pimp in hustle and flow. It doesn't work. You know, I don't I don't think they have to do it to do that. But. You know, it, it, it just in the spirit, it really makes you think about what you're actually watching. You're watching spirits act out these roles. And in turn, what is this doing to me mentally when I believe that I'm watching something genuine and it's, it's so good, but this is actually being led by a demon? You know, you got you to gotta really think about this on a deeper level. And in turn, it would definitely make you not be as interested in watching some of these films that are just, you know, they're promoted heavy. The ones that really come out with the, the A-list actors and stuff like that, you know, a lot of money is behind them. You know, these are the films where you're basically watching spirits. And for me, I just find that to be crazy, y'all. I, I find that to be out of this world. Like, just how he described it, I don't think anyone has made it so clear as he did. Not even Taraji P. Henson. And especially when you're dealing with something, the, the subject matter can be so dark, yeah. you know? So there were moments on set when I, w I was watching her and when I knew she didn't need to stay into it, I'd go over there and make her laugh, you know, to lighten the mood a little yes. bit. And whenever they yelled as a rap, I was all in her face. Yeah. <laughs> so she could go home and, and, and leave Celia at home because it's a lot when you're dealing with, you know, um, so, uh, playing these characters. Because it's very spiritual what we do yes. as actors. Yes. You're on the set, you have your chakras all open you're allowing this character to use your body as a vessel mm -hmm. and, and and so you have to learn how to flip the switch on and flip it off otherwise it could drive you mad mm -hmm. uh, I mean, <laughs> because no because it, it's spiritual what we do you yes. understand yeah. we allow these characters and these stories to use our bodies as a vessel that is mm -hmm. that is a real mm -hmm. like if you think about it that's you allowing this other energy Project. I let the character speak to me. Uh, what we do as actors is very spiritual. Um, you're on set, and that's why I don't, I don't pick a lot of roles because it's spiritual, and I'm, I'm all alive, and I'm open, and my chakras are open, and I'm letting this character use my body as a vessel to tell its truth. And so when I'm open like that, a lot of energies can't be around me. I'm sorry. Because energy is strong, y'all. Now, I want y'all to notice something they both said. They both said you have to be able to walk away from the spirit once you're done. So, you know, because Taraji P. Henson was telling Fantasia she'll get all in her face to make sure she, you know, comes back to normal, comes back to life, I guess, in a sense. She'll bother her so she can feel that, you know, she needs to come out of it. And that's basically the same thing Terrence Howard said. You have to be able to walk away from it when you're done. But it doesn't seem like something that's so easy. Because obviously you're playing a dangerous game if it's something that, you know, you have to learn how to do. You have to learn how to let the spirit go. Anytime I talk about this, it just makes you think about um, Heath Ledger because, you know, it's always been 
the rumor or, you know, speculated that he died from not being able to get away from those demonic spirits that he was allowing to host his body. And that was what ultimately caused his death. So every time I hear about this, it just makes you think about that because he actually died from it. You know, if that's what you want to believe, it's what I believe. You know, it was definitely a death that probably could have been avoided had he not been doing rituals in order for that Joker spirit to, you know, inhabit his vessel. And he was warned. Remember? Remember Jack Nicholson said that he warned him. And they basically laughed about it. So that goes to show you that this stuff is not a game. And they are all aware of what people are doing in order to really act out these roles. So with that being said, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Really like to get y'all comments on this one. Let me know what y'all think about it. And with that being said, it's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.